All right, everyone, Cowboy Trades here. Welcome back to the channel for another update on the stock market. So I wanted to try out a new video format today. So I'm going to be letting you know 10 different reasons why I'm bearish on the S&P 500 on every time frame. I'm going to be starting off on the higher time frame and working our way down. So let's dive right into this. Number one, the fear and greed index is currently at 67, meaning that greed is driving the stock market, which is not a good sign. Onto our second chart, you can see the S&P 500 2008 fractal that we've been covering on this channel for about the past six months or so is calling for us to break to the downside. And this is beautifully called previous troughs and peaks, troughs and peaks in the market so far. So I do believe that this is going to continue to play out. Reason number three is that if we look at the book depth, basically the liquidity conditions for the e-mini futures in the S&P 500, basically we're interested in how overextended is the volume right now. That's a simpler way of saying it. Uh, but looking at this, Heading over to the weekly time frame is a bit easier to visualize this. You can see the mid price is reverting back to a mean trend line. And you can also see the, that we're basically the most overextended that we've been in volume since we were round about August 2018, which if we do look at this chart, you can see that is where we topped out previously. So onto our fourth chart, we have also reverted back to a mean trend line. You can see the top was over here, 4,800 on the 3rd of January. Ever since then, boom, revert back to the mean, boom, revert back to the mean boom revert back to the mean we should be heading down very very soon onto our fifth chart if we clear this up you can see in a similar fashion we've reverted back to the mean over here we topped out above the ema ribbons over here we topped out above the ema ribbons we broke down reverted back into them we would we topped out just above the ema ribbons broke back down and quite recently we've reverted once again back into the ema ribbon so this is another chart meaning we should be heading down over onto our sixth chart, you can currently see there is a pretty sizable bear flag playing out on the S&P 500 right now with a price target all the way down here at 3,215. This would represent about a 19.75% drop from where we are right now. This would break us down into new lows and you can literally see we're literally hugging the bottom of this trend line right now. If we start capitulating beneath 3,990 and you know if we're still at this level tomorrow we're going to be falling out of the side of this bear flag and it's going to be bad. Onto our seventh chart and our final higher time frame chart, you can see Stochastic RSI is currently approaching 96. When was the last time it was this overextended? In August, where we found our top over here, 4,300, before rolling down into new lows. You can also see looking at the money flow index, basically looking at uh, the relative strength in the market, considering the volume as well. So we're looking at volume overextensions when we're looking at this as well. We've reverted back to this mean trend line. So once again, another reason why oscillators are telling us that we should be breaking down soon. Now for our eighth chart, this is really in the mid time frame because we're looking at an Elliott wave pattern that's, which has actually been playing out since the 16th of August, but it is on the four hourly time frame nonetheless. You can see we've had a bearish one, two, three, four, five Elliott wave to the downside. What happens after a five wave down? You have a correctory A, B, C back up. And within the correctory A wave and within a correctory C wave, you should have a miniature five wave count within that. So let's see what's going on right here. You can see since this low, you've got the one wave, you've got a correction, you've got a free wave, you've got a correction, you push up here, you didn't make new highs in terms of wicks, you rolled back down a bit, you still respected this floor, and then you pushed up and solidified the fifth wave before starting to break down to the downside. So what comes next after an A, B, C to the upside? Well, we should be getting ready to start a whole new one, two, three, four, five. And in my opinion, this may be one of the last five waves to the downside that we may see in this bear market. Heading over to our ninth chart. Now, this is kind of like a two in one. On one hand, you can see a huge run to the upside, a spiky head, and a run back to the downside. This is, of course, known as a BART pattern. And on the flip side of that, on the same chart, you can also see this is a diamond top formation that is playing out. We kind of rolled over to the upside of it. We retested this trend line, and ever since then, we've been nuking. And you can also see, you could also argue this could just be another mini BART pattern, which could help us push to the downside and come down to our price target of this bar pattern, which is all the way down here where the massive uptrend started at 3,942 for the S&P 500, meaning 
from where we're at right now. In the lower time frames, we could definitely expect about another 1.67% drop. And on the daily today, we've really, really been nuking. And bear in mind, we're down about 1.6% today. So this could just be, in the next couple of days or so, us filling and having another extremely bearish day. Now onto our 10th chart and the 10th reason on why I'm bearish right now is that the interest rates have not yet pivoted. Why do I say this is a lower time frame thing? Well, because we've got our next FOMC meeting in less than nine days. The Fed is going to come out. A lot of people are thinking we're going to have a 50 basis point increase. And even if we do, let's say hypothetically we have a 50 basis point increase, it is very, 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 very difficult to start a bull run when financial conditions are extremely extremely tight and non-accommodative. Bull runs typically start when you come down to really, really cheap interest rates because that is when people are interested in borrowing money. You know, companies look to float new equity. There's more investors in the markets. You know, it's just, it's so much easier to have a bull run when you're in accommodative financial conditions. And if I do overlay the S&P 500, like I said, it's not impossible, but when you do come down to these cheap financial conditions, Cheap financial conditions down here is literally what started the bull run from 2009. And you can see we had a tiny, tiny run up in terms of financial conditions over here. And, you know, the growth did still go up, but it had a few drawdowns. Uh, and it wasn't until you came back down to this extremely cheap accommodative monetary policy uh, when we just had this absolutely explosive bull run to the upside. So once again, it's not impossible, but bull runs typically start when you're in cheap financial conditions. It is very hard, uh, like for example, as you can see, there's a pivot over here and there's a pivot over here. People seem to have this notion that as soon as the Fed pivots, the bull run starts uh, but over here in, two, in the year 2000. That was not the case. We, con we continue to have a bear market, a very prolonged and bloody bear market. And you can see over here in 2007, Fed started to pivot. And we were literally, you know, only at the start of the meltdown. So you do have to bear in mind as well with the interest rates. It is a little bit tricky looking at these because financial conditions are always different cycle over cycle. So you can't say we're exactly in 2008. You can't say we're exactly in 2000. But it is something to keep your eyes on. And once again, the main takeaway from this is it is extremely hard to start a bull run when you're in elevated financial conditions. It will take a while. And even if we do have a 50 basis point increase, that is only going to tighten monetary policy even further. So that is really all I've got for you for this video, my friends. Like I said, just wanted to provide a quick update. If you do like this quick format where I talk about a few different charts and blast through them, let me know in the comments down below. If you do, make sure to smash that like button, hit the notification bell, share the channel with your friends. Uh, also, head over to my Twitter at 618 underscore cowboy. Uh, I did share a slight mini thread version of this about three days or so ago on why I was bearish when the price was at higher levels. If you didn't know, I was away for the weekend. So that's all I've got for you for this episode, my friends. As always, cowboy out. Peace.